Hello everyone, and warm welcome to Funk Prog Sweden from Vietnam. <laughs> we are today live streaming from Vietnam, so we're six hours ahead, ahead of the Swedish time that we usually live stream, hence we do it in the middle of the day in Europe time. Um, I will, as always, start with the agenda. First, we'll do an introduction by me, Magnus Sedlacek. Then we'll head over to Beam It Up with Erlang and Elixir by Fung Van. Then we'll have the quick guide to build a real-time page with Phoenix Live View by Jung Tran. But first, I would like to thank our venue sponsor, Precio Fishbone. Thank you very much. <laughs> very kind regards that you have been able to host us in this very nice office. And then I would also like to thank our video sponsor, Ada Beats. Ada Beat is an IT consulting company based in Stockholm and in Ho Chi Minh. Hence, we are here and live streaming. If you want to know more about Ada Beat, check them up in social media. And then also, before we start, we have the upcoming schedule. So already next week, I'm back in Stockholm, and then we run another meetup. Then on 21st of February, we'll run a meetup from Kivra, a company in Sweden. And then we'll have a meetup in March and April. So there will be more fun functional programming. If you want to support the community, and of course you won't, you'll join the meetup community you head over and subscribe to the channel and the most important you get this t-shirt from the merch merchandise shop we have set as low price as possible so everyone can get one now if you have questions during the live stream in please use the chat if you're online if you're in the room raise your hand we'll send over a microphone because otherwise the people online will not hear it with that, let's start our first presenter. Please come on up. While she's fetching the, the laptop, I will uh, introduce her. Born and grew up in Vietnam. Today I'm a developer and consultant at Erlang Solutions in Stockholm, Sweden. I fell in love with Erlang during my days in university and was fortunate enough to be able to work with it ever since. Using Erlang and later Elixir, I've been working hard, hands-on, with multiple clients from large-scale legacy telecom products to users, database services, using the hottest and latest Phoenix Live View. Welcome up on stage. Thank Again. you. Hello, everyone. So, so today I will talk about... Uh, wait, can you hear me? Make my works. Okay, good. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about beam up with Erlang and, and Elixir. So uh, let's just start with who I am, because you know some of you have met me, most of you have not. Uh, my name is Phuong, um, and I was born and grew up in Vietnam in Hanoi, and I moved to Sweden in 2010, where I finished high school and then I went to universities, and. In lots of universities in Sweden, Erlang is actually quite popular for uh, functional programming language courses. And I, you know, I started there in uni, and I was like, "That's you know, that looks cool. That was fun. I like, I had a great time studying that um, that course. And then um, I applied for I don't I don't remember it was some like Java job somewhere and then the recruiter called me up and like I have something in Erlang and it's in Viet and then there's an office in Vietnam I'm like what and that's where I start my first job um, uh, using Erlang it was like a uh, quite how to say legacy projects in Erlang where you you know it's uh, lots of maintenance, a lot of testing. Uh, and then I moved to uh, Erlang Solutions, uh, where like I started learning LEC from at Erlang Solutions as well, because, you know, uh, actually, like, if you know Erlang, if you go to Erlang, like, 
conferences. There's normally they talk about Erlang and then Elixir. They got kind of like you know together, and then I learned Elixir, and then I started also do some consultancy work in Elixir, uh, and then it was some you know it's a bit more different industry like sport betting and e-commerce media, and yeah that's my journey. So a bit about Erlang solutions because you know where I'm uh, representing. So we built. Uh, a trans scalable, transformative solutions. Uh, our values is consultancy, capabilities, and community. So we provide um, consultancy. So we do consulting in Erlang and Elixir for different companies. We also provide code review and architecture review. So it's not just help uh, develop programs, but also, you know, uh, just help you improve your, um, you know, your product. Uh, we also have experts in Erlang and LXC for trainings. Uh, there's both like in person and online training. We have like one of the uh, creative Erlang, Robert Verding, who is uh, do some training in Erlang as well. Uh, and we provide Erlang certifications. And as I said, communities. Magnus was also saying about communities. Uh, Erlang solutions also involves in communities. We want to spread. Uh, like the love of Erlang Elixir for everyone. So we have different conferences such as Codebeam, Lambda Day, there's Rabbit MQ Summit, Elixir Conference, and local meetup groups. That's a bit about Erlang Solution and me. And now onto the topic. So first of all, I, I can't ask people online, but how many of you here knows Erlang? Yeah, some of you. Elixir. <laughs> That was a bit less, but that's nice. Um, so a bit about the Erlang. Uh, it's a functional programming language created by Joe Armstrong, Mike William, and Robert Verding at Ericsson CS Lab. And it is um, they the, the purpose is for telecommunications, so to handle a lot of uh, concurrencies, you know, a lot of phone calls. Um, and those are the pictures is, um, you know, Erlang the movie is real. It's on YouTube. Search for it. It's really nice. It's, um, it's, it's a demo about Erlang from the um, creators. Uh, now it is open source and being maintained by Ericsson OTP team. Uh, Erlang has a bit of like, you know, how do I say? A bit like different syntax from other programming languages. Uh, a bit like Prolog. Um, so this is, uh, as you can see on the screen, it's a bit of like sample code with uh, Erlang. So Erlang is built to write once and run forever. That's the word from uh, Joe Armstrong. So it's it's for distributed, high availability, soft real-time system, uh, full, full tolerant, and hot code swapping. And and that's like the whole essence of Erlang. One thing is that there's some trade-off, such as like typing. Like if you are in ja doing Java, for example, you always have to declare the types. In Erlang, there's no type. Um, for example, here in the function, uh, I cut. I have to. There we go. Um, Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, if you look at like those um, pattern matching, you can you can kind of see like oh, it's it must should be an integer there. However, it can be anything. Uh, you can call the function with anything. It will fail, but you can call the function with anything, basically. Uh, so that's why this Elixir Elixirs had. A little bit more modern syntax. Uh, I will have some like demo code later, so you will see how Elixir code work. I need to move away from this cable. Uh, so Elixir is created by Jose Valim uh, from Brazil, and it had just had its 10 years birthday last year. So Erlang is around from the 80s, and Elixir was just around 10 years. Uh, it's built on top of Erlang, uh, run on the Beam virtual machine. 
and you can actually call Erlang functions uh, from Elixir. Uh, yeah, from Elixir. So Elixir used the essence of Erlang, and the difference is it has a lot of libraries and tooling. So Erlang is more built for like telecom. You know, you need a lot of security, and you write, um, you know, code and libraries yourself. Like if you need something, normally you write code yourself. You don't want to. You know, get stuff from GitHub all over the place. AC is a bit different because, like, you can, you know, call use a lot of libraries. Um, and one thing I got like the the quote is: this easy to start and have like run up LXE applications?" I have a teammate who is doing Go, and he was telling me like, "Yeah, I was trying LXE out um, for like advent of code during December." And he, and he was like, yeah, I want to try something out and try LXC. And he was like, it's so easy when you just do mix like Phoenix new and you basically got like everything. There's um, like database configure and then this, you know, uh, Phoenix like just thing just there for you. So let's start, let's talk about the superpower of Erlang and LXC. And you know, to get you interested. interested. Um, so as I said, the Beam virtual machine, uh, where the Erlang code is compiled, and LXC source code is compiled to the Beam. That's like you know where all the small light processes and auto um, garbage collection is going on. And the most amazing thing about uh, Erlang is the OTP. Uh, by the way, there was there was some recruit that was writing in like OTP, and then there was like one-time password in the in the bracket. So I, I have to say it's not one-time password. It's open telecom platform. Um, uh, so it's a different like lot of um, libraries or yeah, like behavior like Gen server state machines that is uh, built inside Erlang, and you can use it. Um, how do I say? So you can like use for different like processes. I can show you uh, later in the demo. Uh, and what I like about Erlang also, there's a writing recursive function. Maybe if you're not used to it, it can be a bit difficult, but it's kind of fun to write and pattern matching. Uh, like for example, if you need some case, like you don't have to say case and else and else and else and else. You can like do pattern matching in like this function with different function like in here. Like you can do pattern matching uh, with um, like different function instead of you know declare a lot of cases and else. Uh, and hot code loading is one thing uh, really cool about Erlang and Elixir that you can keep your system running, but you can like uh, compile you know, your code, fix the code, and then keep the system still running and fix the code uh, on other place, and then load it, reload the code, still keep the other thing running. Uh, let me show you. If, oh, better? Okay. Uh, why is a Google Doc? Uh, no. There we go. That's the demo. So, a uh, little bit of spoiler because this is built with with uh, Phoenix Live View as well. I'm sorry, I'm using Live View like right now. So, but this is use. You going I'm not gonna tell you how Live View is like how it's working, how I do this. It's just a demo for uh, Erlang processes and hot code loading. So with Erlang, uh, the concept of supervisors, you can have a supervisors and you can spawn uh, little processes uh, that the supervisor supervise. And if the process die, um, it can, like one of the process from the supervisor die, it can restart. Uh, for example, here the purple ones are supervisors. The blue ones are like different workers, different processes running. 
And this, uh, this is one of the strategy uh, called all for one. No, one for all, one for all. Uh, if one process dies, the supervisor will restart like the processes that is supervised. However, the other processes that are, is not supervising keep running. So, okay. so for example, we have one process that just do like count. You know, it's just increment counting every I don't know five second, uh, and then I spawn another two count process. Okay, now I need to make this bigger because you need to see the whole thing. So uh, I should do like two. If it start, there we go. So, um, so we have now we have four processes running. This, um, these two have the same supervisor. How about these two have different supervisors? If this, no, why? Which? Oh, come on. It has to. Let's see. Let's try again. I brutally kill. Um, you can see these got restarted to zero, but the the rest is still running. And if you have a faulty code, for example, this one count to two and then it's going to just die. So here the system's still running. And let me, you know, it's still running. Things still running in the background. Let's see if we, you can see thing running in the background. Number still counting. It's still running. I go to faulty code and there's a faulty or uh, let me close this. How do I close this side? Yeah. So there's a piece of code that say when the data is less than two, uh, then then you do the you know increase. Otherwise, you kill the process. So let's remove this so make it not faulty ish uh, and then we go to the here and we do a recompile and this thing is still running and now we start a faulty oh start a faulty and then now it's gonna just keep counting and it's not gonna fail at two there now it's and the rest, like, you can see the rest is still, you know, running and you don't affect the other processes at all anymore. So that's the power of supervisors in Erlang. And how about Elixir? So Elixirs utilize the superpowers of Erlang and OTPs. Um, you know, it has everything you have seen before. Things were written in Elixir. You can do the same, like, with Erlang without, you know, the UI. That's why I was using live view because you can see things happening. <laughs> um, there's um, a bit like different about LXCs is, as I mentioned, libraries and toolings. Um, you can do like, uh, for example, Mix is um, a script that you like from LXC. You can generate a new project. You can generate a new Phoenix project. You can. Uh, generate like a new da new database migration, so it's like really nice, um, and seamless integration with database with Ecto libraries. Uh, LXC have Ecto libraries that you know you don't even need to like write so many SQL queries. You just use the functions in LXC to do to do queries. Um, and Phoenix and Phoenix Live View, as I mentioned, that I showed before, and Zoom gonna show you a bit more about Live View. Um, and Alexis, um like core team and the um, creator Joseph Alim are also quite active in like experiment it with new stuff. There's some thing new called Live Book, Live Book, and Bumblebee about uh, for like machine learning, and it's really cool. So I haven't checked that out really well, so I, haven't, I couldn't really talk about it. But it's, um, 
it's uh, like Joseph Valim show it uh, on some conferences and it's look really cool for like you can do those um, chat like similar to chat, chat GPT or like you know generate an AI picture using Bumblebee still experimental I think and like but uh, I think he could he show it like you can generate a kind of like Ghibli style pictures using Bumblebee and powered by the beam because you know, you heard about like Erlang and LXC and you're like, who's using them? <laughs> you know, you haven't heard about programming language, but actually a lot of big names using them. Uh, we have, of course, Ericsson, where the language was Erlang was written for, still use Erlang for um, like some of their telecom projects. Uh, WhatsApp, use Erlang. So they there was a blog post from WhatsApp that they said they could like run I think a million like concurrent processes in like one server or something. And they you know there was only fifty um, engineers to manage like around I don't know millions, nine millions of users uh, with WhatsApp. And um, there's a lot of um, tools also like uh, Mongoose IM and RabbitMQ uh, that use um, Erlang and I think Mongoose use Elixir. Anyway, uh, so for example, Rabbit is a message queue um, system, and like there's a lot of companies using them behind the scenes that you don't hear about, and like. It's just like when you talk to people, you're like, oh, you use Rabbit? Like, yeah. And like, we, I remember we in Erlang Solutions, we found some like um, kind of maintenance contracts from, you know, different names that we never heard about before that they do Rabbit just because, you know, it's, it write once and run forever with, Joe's, uh, with uh, Joe Armstrong saying so. Yeah. Uh, and you also have um, some fintech companies that use Erlang, such as Vocaling and Klarna. They are um, like different like bank system. Klarna is a startup bank in Sweden. Well, they're not really a startup anymore, but they are a bank uh, in Sweden that kind of online only, and they have some like core banking system was written in Erlang, they started with Erlang and they wanted to, to replace it with Java and the rumor is they haven't been able to. <laughs> uh, we have also Cisco's that use Erlang in their like embedded Erlang in their networking sys like solutions. Um, we have also and with Alexi there's uh, Lonely Planet and Pinterest. Um, I think Lonely Planet use um, like different have different microservices using LXC um, and kind of same with Pinterest. Uh, we also have PepsiCo uh, in the US that use LXCs for I think it started with um, like for the integration between with the database um, with the data team for like analytics and and then I think and then it spread in in like uh, PepsiCo e-commerce and the use of a different e-commerce solutions as well. And we have Discord. Discord is similar with WhatsApp. They they kind of like, you know, have a lot of concurrence chats and groups, things going on left and right. And they choose LXCs instead of like, I think they got inspired from WhatsApp or something like that, but they use LXC because you know, the syntax is a bit, like more familiar and yeah there's many more for example my current projects also using Alexis and live view for uh, the like different uh, services for example user database or some playback api yeah hope some of this you know sounds interesting to you and if you guys are interested in learning Erlang and LXC, uh there are two different, there are two like, I, I would say like, Kyle, Bible, uh, for learning 
So Erlang, there's a book called Learn You Erl Some Erlang for Great Goods. It's a really cool book. Uh, you can find it online and it has a lot of like illustrations and really clear explanation and take you step by step uh, to learn Erlang, especially with uh, OTP that I mentioned. Um, I would, I think I would try to, uh, I think I would try to, um, you know, link all of that in the meetup comments if it works. Uh, and then the exorcism is um, like free learning. Uh, sorry, no, oh, they are like free learning uh, you, website, I guess. So they have a lot of exercise and LXC have a lot of nice mentors. Um, so that is where you can, you know, learn through some like code challenges and then you got mentors help you uh, answer questions or like comments on your code seeing if things you can improve this or not. And yeah, you know, also community. <laughs> um, so there's a LXE and Erlang forum uh, to, for you to like, when you have question in Erlang LXE, go to those forums instead of you know, Stack Overflow because there's way more um, helpful like answers. And there's a, and as I mentioned, there's a lot of conference about Erlang LXE and the Beam and you know, listen to their success. And if you have, you know, we have some people using Erlang here in Vietnam and Elixir. Uh, share your stories because you know we want to hear different stories from people from all over the world. And yeah, thank you for listening. <laughs> questions or yeah, yeah, questions. Yeah, Song. Uh, anyone in the audience have any questions? Dare to have questions? No one in the first row there to have questions. <laughs> I will ask, how come you, where did you study as you studied Erlang? You said you fell in love with Erlang in the university. Sorry, what? Well, you studied Erlang yeah. in the university. Yeah. Which university? Oh, it's the uh, Gothenburg University. Okay, mm. yeah. I only thought they did Haskell in Gothenburg, no? No. Oh. No? No, it was, a, it, was a, it was Erlang. And I heard it's from uh, the uh, Stockholm Royal Institute, it's Erlang Elixir right now yeah. as well. Yes. So. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very interesting. I will check if there's any questions in the chat. Yeah. Very nice presentation. Thank, Thank you very you. much. And you also dare yeah. to jump over the cable several times. I think that yes. was pretty daring. You also <laughs> stayed calm during like the live coding, even though it yeah. <laughs> failed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, I see like red in the you know in the terminal. I'm like, ooh. What have I done wrong? Yeah. I think I think it was it was meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Good. Yeah. Yes. Only applause in the chat. So again, big applause. Thank you.